Hey guys, uh, welcome back. This is History of Power Rangers Season 3, Episode 3 of my show, but this is about Episode 2 of Season 3. Now, Episode 2 in Season 3 is Part 2 in the three-part episode, A Friend in Need. But before I start talking about it, um, I'm just gonna mention what I might do is I'll record this now and then after supper today I'll probably post it. Um, but, um, but that's the only thing I wanted to get off topic and mention as of right now. And, but anyway, now getting into the actual episode. This is History of Power Rangers Season 3, Episode 3 of my show, but this is about Episode 2. And Episode 2, like I said, is Part 2 in the three-part episode... A friend in need. Now, basically, this part starts off where the previous part ended. Now, if you guys remember back in the previous video I covered, um, the Rangers had managed to escape. Um, the Rangers, along with the Masked Rider, had managed to escape from uh, Count Dragon's forces by heading underground. And... That's basically where this episode picks up, is they're still underground, like they're not really underneath the planet, but they're underground in the part of the planet where, like in a cave system, basically. And basically what happens is, after that, um, basically what happens is the Rangers, along with uh, Prince Dex and his friends managed to get to this cave area, and then basically that's when um, Dex, who is in the Master Rider form by this point, D, um, sort of like D morphs back to his human form, and then he introduces himself to. Uh, the rangers in their, who are still in their ranger forms at this point. Um, and anyway, but but after he reveals his human identity to the rangers, he tells them that he's They've trusted him with uh, their I with his identity. He trusted them with his identity. He as and because of that trust, he will not betray the trust of theirs. Um. So uh, five of the six rangers, because at this point, Kimberly is still on Earth, because if you guys remember in the previous video I talked about, she had this uh, sort of like a flu kind of thing, and so she, so five of the six rangers that, the five of the six rangers that went with, that went to Edenoi to check on the situation, they revealed their human identities and say their names to Dex and his friends, and then Dex explains who is friends are that are helping him and then basically after that Tommy inquires um about what's happened on their planet and about he's also curious about because you see in their human forms the Edenites when they're not wearing those gas masks have these little weird crystals on the top of their foreheads which are uh, uh, called mind crystals, essentially. Um, and that's what Tommy inquires about. So he had Dex about those um, crystals and about how the Master Rider powers came to be. And then basically, um, he uses the mind crystal. Now I'm going to explain what it does. It allows... Essentially, what the Mind Crystal does is it allows the Edenites to essentially uh, telepathically transmit their 
um, uh, thoughts as a, like an image kind of thing, sort of like a projection sort of thing. And then basically, he tells the rangers in that memory that, uh, Count Dragon has enslaved his people, basically, and then uh, Tommy wonders how they're, how could they just allow Count Dragon to do this, and then Dex explains that it's not really, and before I continue, I'm just going to get off topic here, it's not really their fault in this episode, why they let themselves get enslaved by uh, Count Dragon and his Plague Patrol. It's mainly because of how they are in this series. They're, uh, their planet is a race of humanoid-based people that are basically scholars and so on and so forth. They don't, they have uh, no need for fighting because there's no conflict or anything without the mass fighter powers being needed. So there's no reason for them to fight. That's why uh, Dragon managed to take over the planet in this three-part episode um, so easily, essentially. And and then he also explains to them, that's when the, that's when his uh, uh and that's when he tells them about the Masked Rider powers. Now, basically, what the Masked Rider powers are is essentially they're the Edenite equivalent of, I guess you could kind of consider them to be the Edenite equivalent of Power Ranger type powers. So, uh, <laughs> um, and he explains to them that the powers of the Masked Rider have been passed down from generation to generation, king to king, essentially, for each planet, for for each generation on Edenoid. And kept always ready, but never used until the time was right. And unfortunately, they need... Like, are you talking to someone, or are you making a video? Yeah, I'm making oh, a video so right now. Um, what's for supper? I will be back to tell you. Okay, um, sorry about that, guys. Uh, anyway, um, continuing on with what I was saying, he explained to them, uh, um, basically, like I was saying previously, he explains about the Master Rider powers being kept always ready but never being needed, and... Basically, um, he told them that how he got a hold of the Master Rider powers, and basically with his friends, he started a sort of a, sort of a, res I guess you could kind of think of it as a resistance movement to, um, Count Dragon's forces causing trouble on the planet by turning the people into slaves, essentially. Anyway, um, and then that's basically where he explains that that's the situation that has happened on their planet. And then, uh, basically, one of the rangers, I think, I think it, was either Adam or Billy, but one of them mentions about, one of the rangers asks about King Lexian, who is Alpha's creator, and this is where it gets interesting, because Dex tells them that Lexian, who, as I said, is the ruler of the planet, is also, and also Alpha's creator, is technically his grandfather, is Dex's grandfather, so he's also in hiding, uh, like, Dex is, until they can find a way to get off the planet, and in order to find a way, 
until they can find a way to defeat Count Dragon, basically. And so, by that notion, they realize that he is safe for the time being, which is going to play a hand in Alpha's happiness in the last part of this episode that I'm going to cover in the next video. I just wanted to get that out of the way. And then, basically, what happens is the Rangers decide to help out Dex and his friends for the time being while they're on their while they're on the planet and then basically uh that's when these um that's when Count Dragon and sends down his plague patrol as well as these weird little uh I guess you could say weird little bug like creatures uh, no, this is the funny part. They're actually called, uh, cob warts. Oh my god. I'm sorry I didn't bring them up when I did the character bio video for the first, for the third season, but it, it, they just appear in this three-part episode, so I figured there would be no point in mentioning them if, since they don't show up for the remainder of the third season after this three-part episode, so that's why I didn't bring them up. Anyway, um... Then one of the members of the Plague Patrol is telling the convoy to flush the rebellion, his prince and his friends out of the cave. And then after that, the same one that is saying that mentions that to tell him, he tells Dex that his multicolored friends, whoever they are, can't save him for good. Can't help him escape his fate of being destroyed. And then basically what happens is after that, um, when they realize that they're cornered in the cave, um, Dex mentions to the ranger that he has the capabilities of dealing with the cobwarts, which, but at the, but, but as for the Plague Patrol, the, but the Plague Patrol is a different matter. So the Rangers say that they'll be the ones to handle that. And then they, um, go out to face the Plague Patrol and Cobb Wards. And then basically before, um, Dex, uh, transforms into the Master Rider powers, um, he basically uh, tells the Plague Patrol member that's with the Cobwort that as more friends of theirs rally to their cause, the day grows closer when their evil master, Count Dragon, will be banished from Edenoid, essentially. And basically, that's when they, that's when... Uh, he said the activation thing for the Mass Rider powers, which in this case is called Ectophase Activate. And then he explains to them that now he will know the power of the Mass Rider and the Power Rangers. Um, and the, and the rangers along with uh, Prince Dex and his friends managed to fight the plague patrol and the cop wards. Um, and then basically what happens is they're still fighting them. And then basically after that, um, um, this is the point in the video where... This is the point in the episode where we and Zed send down the have Finster send down that repellent. Now I'm going to get to the part with Zed because by this point in the episode, Finster has finished creating his monster. Now I'm going to mention what this monster is. This monster is similar to the silver... The Silver Horns monster that Zed created back in Season 2. And the reason why I say it's similar to that one is because 
It's sort of the same one, except it's a green instead of blue. It's called the Repellator. And basically, um, what happens is after Finster has it created, um, <laughs> oh, but before I continue, I'm just going to mention one l last little thing here. Um, um, uh, before the monster was created, um, Goldar mentioned about Count Dragon, which kind of upset Zen, and Zen's like, Oh, that Count Dragon, he's too evil for his own good. And then, but I just wanted to backtrack there to that part since I sort of missed it. Anyway, um, uh, what basically happens is Finster reveals the repel to a monster and then Zed said, decide to send the repel to a monster down to Earth and, and then he, that he wants the planet conquered uh, by sundown in order to uh, so that he doesn't have to hear the end of uh, Count Dragon bragging and stuff like that which as I stated is because in the previous video I talked about, I stated that Zed hated him more than the Power Rangers because he's always been trying to one-up him and he was always, essentially, it's a little competition. But anyway, can, getting back into what uh, I was saying earlier, he, they send the Repellator monster down, and by that point, that's when the alarm in the command center goes off, and... Alpha, then Zordon has Alpha try to contact the Rangers on Edenoid to have them sent back to their world to deal with the monster. But when Tommy answers, he explains that um, they're busy dealing with the Plague Patrol and the Cobb Warts at the moment. So basically, because of that, um, Zordon says that um, their only choice uh, Alpha said that their only choice to deal with the Repellator monster on Earth is Kimberly, who's sick in this episode. So, uh, then Zordon mentioned that they don't have a choice. Um, so he has Alpha contact her on her communicator, and then she answers. Then she answers him, and then basically what happens is, um, after, um, Alpha explains that Rita and Zed had sent a monster down to the park, which is the Repellator monster, to de attack Angel Grove while the rest of the Power Rangers aren't, are away fighting on Eden. So he basically tells her that he knows he's not well, but she needs to deal with the Repellator monster for the time being until the others get back. So she said she's okay with it and she'll be fine. So she morphs to her uh, ranger form and then starts fighting the Repellator monster after it is sent to Earth. And then when the Repellator monster sees her, he's like, well, well, a lone power ranger. Oh, but before I continue, um, oh, oh, but before I continue, I just want to mention something about Bolton Skull here, because if you guys remember in the previous video I talked about, they had sort of told this little fib to impress these girls about, that were crazy about the power engine. Now, the funny thing is, um... Uh, what they do is they don't know the actual Power Rangers, so what they do is they dress up in these costumes that are similar to the costumes that the Rangers have, except the helmets aren't actually real helmets, like they're big ones with visors uh, that slide up and down. Oh my god, and they start talking, and then that's when the Repellator monster shows up on Earth. I just wanted to backtrack there since I missed it. But anyway, that's the only backtrack I'm going to do here. But anyway, as I was saying, Kimberly starts fighting the Repellator monster. And then while she's fighting it, the Repellator monster uses his, um, 
uses uh, th throws her up in the air and then while he when he throws her up she manages to scramble her atoms and then basically she says that repellator is gonna pay for that because no one gets away with scrambling her atoms and gets away with it and then and then after she's thrown it down one more time she says what if she can't deal with this on her by herself and then that's basically where this episode stops so if you guys like this video when I post it, just please give this video the real best you guys can. And I will see you guys probably tomorrow for the next Power Ranger video. So until then guys, like I always tell you with this series, may the power protect you always.